a sunny day, surrounded by the gods of cloud and infrastructure, sits Sherman Kranzer, a former Microsoft executive who dedicated his life to helping partners achieve greatness. Working 90 hours a week, wired directly into the mothership, learning, watching, coaching, believing in something greater than possible, he created the Microsoft Partner Super System. This system uses a systematic approach to help partners transform into the partner of tomorrow. His partners grew at an average rate of 42% year over year, and in FY19 produced over $900 million in revenue. The Crancer Group manages a select number of Microsoft partners each year. Contact the Crancer Group and see if you qualify for consideration to be managed and transformed into the partner of tomorrow. Many partners we work with are very frustrated with working within the Microsoft ecosystem. They're frustrated with how do they sign up for the right programs or get the right incentives. We specialize in helping those Microsoft partners get into the right programs, ensure they're in the right incentives, and put them on a path to grow at least 40% year over year. Next, we actually install a marketing machine program that helps our partners put together a very strategic go-to-market strategy that will put in place a way that they can drive 10 net new opportunities every single month. We look forward to talking with you, so please give us a call. Welcome to the Voice of the Microsoft Partner. My name is Sherman Kranzer, and thank you so much for joining us today. Today's going to be a fantastic, you know, hour, really. You know, the Voice of the Microsoft Partner, we put this on once a month. And we do this uh, because what we're trying to do is, is create a forum, a group, uh, where our partners can learn from great speakers. You know, last year, we had a lot of uh, partner to partners that were actually coming on here and learning about their business this year. Uh, we've had a lot of, you know, we've had uh, special guests from Microsoft. We had Helene Cohen last year. Today, we have got Andrea Relf from the Surface team. Next month, uh, we have Allison Seltzer from the IoT uh, team. And, you know, today, you know, we're going over this great program is we're really going to be focusing on Microsoft Surface and why it's so powerful and why you should be thinking about adding Microsoft Surface along with software to really increase revenue, drive net new opportunities. Uh, there's a special time right now, you know, especially in this pandemic, you know, we're coming out of, right, uh, that the reality is people are going back to work, but they're not going back to those corporate, you know, corporate, uh, you know, offices like they used to. So there's a, uh, a need for device refresh, but also a need to combine possibly like things such as Windows VDI, right? So we're going to be talking a lot about that today. Today, we've, we've got a lot of really uh, neat things to cover. Let's just go quickly into the, uh, the agenda for today so everybody kind of knows what's going on. Uh, when we have the agenda, uh, we're going to first do a did you know just for a few minutes, and we're going to share something that we have uh, instituted with one of our partners uh, that has been, uh, not one of our partners, but across the board with our partners that is really eye-opening, right? Uh, then we have discovery, we have business development, and we also have sales and marketing we're going to round out. Each uh, session is about uh, 15 minutes, uh, and we should end uh, pretty well uh, at the end. Uh, so the first thing I'd like to do first and foremost is introduce our, our guest speaker today. Um, let's go ahead and uh, push that over and bring in our guest speaker, our great guest speaker, Andra Ralph. Hey, Andra, how you doing? Uh, hey, would great you mind kind of just introducing yourself and kind of your role at Microsoft? It'd be fantastic to learn more about you. Absolutely. And I'm going to ask everyone's forgiveness. I have a bit of a cold, so forgive me uh, in my voice. But hello, I'm Andrew Relf. I am a senior partner development manager here at Microsoft for our U.S. Surface channel. 
Fantastic. Fantastic. Thanks so much. And then, you know, we're going to have uh, some people on my team going to be kind of helping out, asking questions. Uh, Andres Oseguer is our VP of Business Development or Partner Development, excuse me, here. Uh, he'll be asking some of the questions that we have here. But let's go ahead and get right into uh, our very first thing that did you know? All right. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, the very first thing I want to talk about is sales evaluation. So we came up with this program called, you know, it's a sales evaluation for our partners. And the reason why we did this is we last year we did a lot of these uh, customer immersion experience uh, for our partners. Seventy percent of them didn't have really any problem with really transforming that into net new business. Right. We we're doing customer immersion experiences. No problem. But about 30 percent of them, we noticed that, you know, we got some great uh, interest right uh, inside of what we were doing. However, when we passed those leads over to our partners, um, they kind of dried, died up on the vine, right? And we kind of figured, well, what was that problem? What was going on? So we came up with this program called Sales Evaluation, really. And it's really to kind of really deep uh, dive deep into, you know, the, the sales acumen, right, of our sellers. Now, it's easy for us to, to kind of sit back and think, and this is just coming from a business person's perspective, somebody, an executive who's, who's you know, watching their business. We hire salespeople, right? And I do. I have several salespeople here at my office. And a lot of times we assume that they have an understanding of what, you know, the basic blocking and tackling that is so necessary, right, to really drive these net new opportunities and net new, you know, uh, you know uh, basically generate revenue. And what we found was very interesting uh, is that you need to really make sure that your sellers uh, and, you know, you know uh, be honest about yourself, right, uh, whether, you know, you understand how to sell. Uh, but, but I think working with your sellers on, uh, making sure they understand the basics you know, of selling. So we're going to go ahead and show a, a spot here. Oh, I think I think we actually already have here. And we have uh, Andres on. Uh, go ahead and pull this up. This is kind of a, a, the basis of our questionnaire. And, and basically what we're doing within this evaluation, and my, my gosh, we have found some unbelievable things. When you get under the hood, the hood or the car looks like a Ferrari, and you get under the hood and you realize you've got a Volkswagen engine in there. Oh, my gosh, the insights that we've been able to figure out you know, about the company, because I think a lot of our uh, partners that we've worked with, a lot of people that we've worked with in the past, assume that their sellers understand what they need to do. So, Andres, you know, one of the questions, I'll, you know, I'll just kind of throw it out to you. When we ran this through, you know, several, several folks just the past three weeks, what was your first impression? Like, did you, were you surprised at the answers? You know, it's not even necessary that I was surprised. I was just um, very interested to see the different storylines that you get both from leadership and from the sales team. Um, you know, you see differences in terms of how they approach the sell, what they see as the, the processes that they have in place to actually generate the different leads and work on them. Um, you know, you get different stories, and that's what I think is most interesting to me, where you can really try and identify the gaps where we can make sure everything is running in alignment with one another. So I think this is absolutely something that you should be doing. And, you know, Sherman, you talk about this all the time. Sometimes we are working so hard every day that we're working in the business. We're not necessarily working on the business. And so I think having a really good understanding yeah, yeah, of how yeah. everything is. It, it, it was very interesting. So what we're showing here right now are, are questions. We actually have a, uh, it's about 45 questions in total. And we're literally asking, hey, what is, the, uh, what is your company's value proposition? You'd be surprised what they say. Uh, can you tell me what is your elevator pitch? You know, then we go into like, what are your discovery questions? Basically, I'll ask them, hey, you know, you're given an opportunity. Somebody is on the phone. Hey, can you tell me how do you start an actual appointment? Tell me how you start it. Uh, okay, what are your top five discovery questions? What products are you leading with? Uh, and it's very, very interesting what comes out and, and the conclusion to this. And the reason why we want to share this with you is you got to work on the business, not just in the business, on the business. And you constantly have to go back, even to your current sales staff, and actually evaluate them to make sure 
that they understand and they can profess the value of your organization. They can profess the value uh, of what they do. What is their elevator pitch, right? But they, but they also need to understand, you know, can you trust, you know, the people that are your frontline, frontline workers? And that's not just sellers, but it's also, you know, with, within our industry, we're built kind of in a situation where we have a lot of account managers, right? Well, are, are your account managers up to speed, right? Are they leading people down the right path? Do they understand Microsoft 365? Do they understand Azure? Do they understand Surface and all the great things along with it? And can they ask those questions? So this is what we're doing with our partner base. Uh, and it's, it's really turned out to be very, very eye-opening. And, and you know what it also does, it allows us to understand what are the gaps and then what we can go back to their team and say, okay, we've noticed with these five reps, X, Y, and Z rep, excellent, fantastic, they're great. Well, you know, uh, rep A and B, we've got some things that we can work on. It's not punitive, it's not a way to like weed people out, but it's really about understanding the gaps. All right, so with that being said, that is your did you know. It is really fantastic. If you need anything, let me know. I'm happy to share this with you individually. Just send us an email. Uh, we can talk a little bit further about it. Uh, but sales evaluation is a super powerful tool. You know, you gotta make sure those people who are representing you uh, can really deliver uh, one given that fantastic opportunity to meet with a net new client. All right, let's go ahead and get into discovery. Here we go. So every superhero has their story. And this is really the first thing that we want to do. Andrew, can you tell us what is your story? What, where, what is the origin of Andrew Vell at Microsoft? Wow, it's a big question, Sherman. Uh, so it's funny. I uh, never envisioned myself actually growing up being in an IT world, working in technology. And uh, I've yet spent the last almost 26 years in technology and have loved every second of it. Uh, I actually started out working in the telecom world and was actually selling 1-800 conferencing way back when, when you were still doing dialing conferencing and you know you had announced, uh, if you wanted an announced kind of entry, you would pay about almost two bucks for that per minute per connection, uh, which is kind of insane to think about now, but that was what was happening. And then that turned into me working for Pacific Bell and I ended up then seeing Pacific Bell be purchased by SBC and AT&T. And I had moved from a global accounts manager role and moved into a partner managing role. And at the time was actually managing a company called WebEx, which people know, um, and another company called Placeware, which may be a little less known for web conferencing. And if a couple years into that, I wanted to go interview for one of those companies because I saw the future going toward, you know, technology was evolutionizing. We were seeing all kinds of changes happening. And I was really enjoying what I was doing in this new collaborative space and wound up at Placeware. And about a year into Placeware, uh, I joked that the blue coat showed up and uh, Microsoft announced that they were purchasing us. And so I found myself back interviewing for a role for Microsoft suddenly and uh, wound up getting the job. And I spent a couple of years as the first software as a service um, solution specialist in at Microsoft working on our what we called live meeting product at that time, which was our web conferencing product and the first to be a SaaS solution for Microsoft. Um, and during that time, I sort of went through a whole origin. I grew up in what we call our unified communication space here at Microsoft. I worked through the evolution of what we now know as Teams, um, but it started out as LCS and then it moved to OCS. So if anyone's been around for a while, you might recognize these. Uh, it went into Link and Link Server, and that was a big uh, venture to be, you know, picking off Cisco Call Manager and putting in Link Servers. And then the cloud really erupted, as we all know, game-changing for us. And Microsoft went out and purchased Skype, 
And now everything that you guys have experienced, if you're a Teams user today, is sort of integrated into this one beautiful, great spot for collaboration and productivity. Wow, that's awesome. That's awesome. That's a great story. I mean, and, and you know, you're, you're part of women in technology, right? And you know, you're an important part of, and, and you know, I think your impact at Microsoft. You and I worked together when I was there. Uh, and saw some of these great things. And actually, currently, we we kind of working together with another one of your mm -hmm. big partners. Um, and uh, you know, thanks again once you know for coming to this. This is this is going to be fantastic. You know, the the first question that we really have here is, you know, help us understand that you know the program that you're working on today and why it's so important to not just Microsoft, but also Microsoft sellers, resellers, bars, SIs, you know, ISVs. Absolutely. Uh, no, great question. So today in my role, I sit as uh, in our U.S. Surface Channel team focused on a number of different partners. I myself have responsibility for uh, some of our, our telecom partners as well as some of our bigger uh, what we would consider LSP and SI type partners. And it's a really exciting role. Um, I see every single day a, a great need for new partnerships to be developed. Uh, within our ecosystem at Microsoft today and the hardware side of the house on the surface side of the house, which is a really fun place to work because we are seeing that convergence of software, hardware and services all coming together. Um, I today mm -hmm. focus on helping our partners to grow their business with our hardware services with service and all of our services that are offered. And then additionally, of course, how are we blending that with you know, all of our wonderful productivity tools um, and, and our, our platform in general. So really cool stuff that we're doing. As far as, you know, how SIs or uh, ISV partners for that matter or NSP partners can participate, we have a number of ways that they can reach out. There are several programs that I can talk about, Sherman, if you'd like, that partners can uh, get themselves involved in. And I'm sure we'll dip into that today to make sure folks understand how they can get engaged. You know, and that, that's great. You know, that, that will we'll segue that into the into the business development. Um, you know, for the partners here, they're like, gosh, I really want to sell Surface. And a lot of them, I remember when I was a PBM, uh, you know, at Microsoft, a lot of our partners were like, I want to sell more of this. I want to, but then, you know, there's, the, but then there's a little confusion, right? Uh, and, you know, Microsoft is so big. I think that's why a lot of partners end up working with us is we help navigate, right? But they want to. So I think we'll have a great chance to do that. Um, I'm going to ask one more question. And then when we move into business development, my, my colleague, uh, Andre is going to lead that, lead that discussion. But, you know, can you share a story, you know, of a challenging customer and we don't need to name names, of course, because sure. we got NDAs in place everywhere, <laughs> right? We've got to be careful here, right? I've learned those you share, you know, like a, a, a story so that we can kind of build this, right? Of somebody as a challenge, maybe a challenged customer or challenging, sometimes they're even more challenging, right? And kind of maybe what you brought to the table that turned them, you know, into a super fan of Microsoft. Absolutely. So I think one of the things that customers still miss today uh, is the benefit that bringing a Surface device to their current investments for things like M365 and Azure can really bring to their environment for ease of use, security, and of course, with COVID, now we're all sort of in this remote working world. Um, and so there's a financial services customer that I will not name, <laughs> but they're very large and they were challenged. They were trying during the COVID period to uh, do a refresh. And unfortunately, the OEM they were working with, unfortunately, didn't have a lot of product available for them. And at the same time, they were making a very substantive purchase around M365. They had already bought into Azure and were utilizing that really effectively. And so our sellers and my partner came in together and we actually pitched them a solution that covered everything from what they've already invested in all the way through to the value that the Surface devices could bring them. And the fact that we had such a flexible, um, you know, vast array of products for them based on their end users and their types of business that they focus on, they got really excited. And, you know, often we are said to have a more expensive product and that is true. We do build it on top of our uh, software platforms. 
So they are built for and designed by and, and, and integrated to work with in a really effective way for our customers. And through a number of different uh, solutions that we have as far as programmatic things, our partners and us were able to work together to get them a really wonderful deal, deliver it in a very effective timeline. And at the end of the day, they've been able to increase their, their speed to sale by about 30%. So they're really, really happy with it. And they're seeing all of that value and benefit of coming together on a full Microsoft solution platform. Everything from the software, the services, and the hardware coming together. And I'll tell you what, you know, we just we just ran our whole team through the, and we'll talk about this later, the CIE program for Surface. Yes. But you know, one of the things that I, I I, I really realized was I could not believe how the service lineup has expanded, right? It's and exploded. it's actually been tailored for the individual type of workers, right? That that you're seeing whether it's a frontline worker, whether it's a corporate worker, whether it's a design worker, you know, maybe just add a little more color to that. You know, could you possibly just maybe add a little bit more to like how you know how interesting it's all been set up for different people in different organ different parts of the organization. Absolutely. So, you know, one of the things that we've been very focused on for our commercial customer space is getting the right device for the type of business that you do. So when you think about, you know, that mm -hmm. if yeah. you're in the field, you want a lightweight device. I, I, you know, Sherman, you remember the days where we would lug around those 10 pound devices and you're running through the airport, you're trying to get work done. It's heavy. <laughs> you can't fit anything else in your bag, that kind of stuff. We've now made really lightweight devices, some of them even under two pounds, and they are super easy and uh, to leverage and use. We have a lot of LTE connected devices as well. So when you think about that mobile worker, a device like, yeah. for example, our, our Surface Pro 7 Plus device is an excellent device and it comes with LTE. So you have that always connected capability. Um, I don't know about you, but going in and out of, you know, customer and partner sites, trying to get their, you know, get through their VPN, through their firewalls, and you know, just even sometimes ascertaining the Wi-Fi code, right? How do I get connected can be difficult. So that LTE device really lends a lot of value. And it's lightweight, it's easy to use, it's got a, a kickstand on it, you can use it in tablet form, you can click on the type cover, you have a whole bunch of ways that that device works. And also it allows for inking, which is fantastic, and they're all touch screen. And then we have more advanced, if you're more of a clamshell device type user, we have a number of different laptop form factors um, that are really fantastic and also super lightweight. In fact, um, you know, I've got several laying around all over the place that I could share and show to you, but here's a great example <laughs> of our laptop device, right? This is a great device. We're now making it in black and then in other colors, it's really slim and lightweight. This is one of my favorites. And today I happen to be working off of a Surface Book, which is also a clamshell factor, but it has a removable tablet to it. So I find myself, you know, in meetings, if I don't want to be sitting there clicking along typing, I'll pull off the, the tablet portion and just use my notes and I can convert that easily to text, send it off in my OneNote and, and we're off to the races. So there's a lot of great flexibility in our devices. And then we have devices like our Pro X device, which is really designed yeah. for that heavy developer type user, right? So we really truly do have a device for every type of user now. And our, our portfolio just keeps expanding. It does, it's crazy. I've got the Surface, uh, I got Surface 7. Um, uh, I've got the, we have got a bunch of laptops around here. We've got the Go Plus. That was awesome. Yes. But I would tell you what, when I, before I, when I left Microsoft, I was working off the book. And that <laughs> was an amazing device. I love that device. It was like, I'm like on that, it today. <laughs> right. That, yeah. That, so so I'll agree with that. No, right. no let's let's go you. into business development here. Um, oh, and then we're going to have uh, Andres lead that. Okay. 
All right, Andrew, how are you doing? Thank you so much. I'm yeah. happy to be here. Sherm, you want to say something? You know, Andres, let me ask you just, I don't, I don't mean to interrupt you here, but we did have two questions from the audience, actually, and oh, this is why this is so cool. Okay. Um, <laughs> hey, uh, no, let me get your phone um, here. The question was, um, you know, from Chris Wing, we're trying to buy over 100 Surface Laptop 3s, 15 inches, but they've been out of stock for a couple months. Do you have a better avenue than the Microsoft Store? Hmm. We sure do through our channel. Um, so maybe that's a great entree into uh, why as a business customer coming to us and working through our channel is a really great way to operationalize or get what you need. And additionally, also to have them available and ready to help you with any of the ancillary services that you might require, such as Autopilot or Intune integration, WVD and Surface as an example, right? Um, so. There are a number of partners. In fact, Microsoft, the way that we're structured is we have uh, about 13 different kind of key large scale partners that are managed here by me and my team. Um, and then additionally, we also have a budding and growing what we call DISTI managed partner. And there are a little over 3,000 of those partners. So we really are trying to amplify and open up the doors for any partner interested to be able to come in and start to get the capability, the qualifications, the certifications to be able to sell surface. So those are all things that we can operationalize and, and help you with through our partner channel. That is awesome. Thank you for sharing that, Andrew. I will say I'm using the Surface Laptop 3 today. That is my personal favorite. So if anybody wants a choice, that's my that's mine. But awesome. Uh, I'm glad we were able to ask that question. If anyone has any other questions, please let us know. I'm sure we can go ahead and let her know. Um, I did have a question, though, because we're talking about business development here. As we're really yeah. starting to, you know, get uh, be make Surface a piece of what we're doing as a, as a business, as an MSP, right? There's a lot of different options. We were just talking about all the different capabilities. What would you say is, you know, good advice just to kind of get started here uh, selling Surface devices to your customers? Absolutely. I think the first is just getting a clearer understanding of how our channel is designed and how you can get in and participate. So the way Microsoft sells through is leveraging three of our distribution channel partners, and those are Ingram, Cinex, and Tech Data. Um, and if you have a relationship with them, and I think we're going to share and show exactly where the links are and how you can access or make inquiries about becoming a Microsoft Surface reseller. But um, those three partners there can help you. So the way we're structured, we have an authorized device reseller channel, which is some of our biggest partners. Um, those are the likes of, of folks like CDW, SHI. Um, I myself manage Verizon. So we have a lot of focus there with those folks in a managed capacity. But we've also put in a whole bunch of work uh, over the last year and a half, really, with managing what we call our DISD managed partner or DMP managed partner. And that's the entry point for you as a partner to get engaged, to get the proper certifications and to start to resell Surface and be able to combine that with any of your you know, services that you're offering. Um, and additionally, of course, if you're already a cloud solutions provider or CSP partner, that will allow you to start doing that really wonderful attach motion that we see with M365 as an example and Surface coming together for the best productivity experience you can give your end users as well as a really secure and easy to manage environment for your IT administrative staff. I love it. Yeah, I am a huge fan. I think it absolutely brings everything together, and I'm yes. totally in agreement with you there. Okay, <laughs> so as we're getting going here, we're starting to sell, right? Um, I, am as a partner, would want to know, what are some scenarios that you've witnessed that have been very successful, and maybe some that have left you puzzled as we started to start selling, you know, these devices? You know, I, I would say that there's a couple. So in the education space in particular, one of the things we often see is a, an education customer may invest a whole lot of money in on our platform, meaning that they're buying into, say, Microsoft 365. So that is, if you're not aware, that's our Windows 10 capabilities. That's also our enterprise mobility suite. And then, of course, that's pulling in, you know, all of the best of our collaboration through Office 365. And sometimes what I see is that they'll try and attach a Chromebook to that as an example. And you lose or degrade all of that wonderful benefit that you just spent your money on 
to get that really wonderful platform for collaboration because it doesn't work or you try and attach an iPad to that, same scenario. So this is where pulling in Surface because it's built on and for all of these solutions can bring a ton of value. And for example, in the education space, we have some awesome devices. In particular, we have our Surface Go product that comes both in Wi-Fi and LTE capabilities for any of those students that might be in a position where they don't have Wi-Fi connectivity. The LTE device is there to support them. And then of course, we also have a really awesome product that I think from nomenclature perspective, people kind of miss because it's called our Surface Laptop Go. And this product is amazing. In the education space, it starts at 549. And it's an awesome device with touch screen. It, it does have a, you know, a fingerprint detector for security. And it comes with all the best of the bells and whistles that Surface can offer from a really premium experience and brings that into the classroom. So that's just one example. And again, kind of brings us back to those personas. But we see these examples once we get in and speak to our customers and understand what those personas are for their users, understand what they're trying to accomplish, understand if they have any challenges with other thing or or Sherman, you're live, brother. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry Plus, about that. Yeah. Over there, yeah. yeah, I don't think he's saw. Not a problem. That is awesome insights. I really appreciate that, Andrew. I think that can give everybody an idea of kind of where to get started, where to go, what are some of the programs we can leverage. One of the other things, you know, some of the things that we actually work with a lot of partners on is really developing these offers, you know, these different yes. capabilities that you can combine. You were talking about that right now, right? The lifeblood of Microsoft 365 flowing through the service device really brings it to life. That's but right. in, in your eyes, you know, and when we're combining the software capabilities along with the actual device, how are you seeing partners combine that to really get some wins on the board? Is there any insight that you can share there for us? Absolutely. Well, we, we have a number of programs that support that um, because we truly believe that the best expression of a Surface device comes from our modern workplace solutions and Azure being able to help us manage and run that. And so we're seeing a lot of the convergence coming together um, from an end user perspective for ease of use and capabilities. Um, you know, things like WVD or WVD and Surface coming together as an example. You know, I think we've all lived in a world of uh, VPN connections, especially as of late, right? Yeah. Um, if you're like me, you've been working remotely for, gosh, well over a decade. But a lot of folks didn't get that luxury or have that understanding. And I've heard just horror stories of IT departments actually moving entire offices to people's homes during COVID. Right. Like I'm talking moving the desktop and everything. Right. And so we we have come in and said, hey, you don't need to do that. Let's help you to extend out that that ability. Right. And then bringing the M365 world in conjunction with Surface, that gives you the end user productivity you want. But from an IT admin perspective, it's also going to help you guys to really understand the value of the security and uh, management capabilities that come with that. And so I know we're going to talk a little bit about VDI and WVD, but that is something that we are seeing an explosion in because of COVID and the need to move and keep productive for a lot of these organizations who aren't used to being able to work in a remote scenario. I love that. And you actually, you know, you brought up a great point there at the very end, or you were talking about uh, the IT pros, the IT admins who are actually yes. managing these devices, right? We understand the end user perspective. I'm a huge fan. I'm sure if you get on service, you'll love it yourself as well. But, you know, from the company's perspective, they're worried about security. They're worried about these other different things. They have to manage and roll out all these different policies. Why does Surface make this so much easier for the IT teams to actually handle their business? Yeah, absolutely. Great question. So, you know, we have a couple of different ways where the cloud enables you to deploy in a really easy fashion. Uh, gone are the days of having to do that traditional SCCM uh, deployment, right, where you're shipping your devices somewhere, either to corporate or to a partner, and they're the ones that are in there, you know, making it all come together, imaging that device, they're doing all the etching, the kitting, etc. And then anytime you're changing 
that imagery, you have to send it back to corporate, which is going to wind up causing you, you know, days and times of lost productivity. Now with the introduction of, of being able to cloud manage your devices and leverage, you know, different services such as autopilot or Intune integration, along with that WVD or WVD capability, that really enhances that experience for the IT professional. And, you know, forgive me here because I don't have it uh, memorized, but I have quite a few uh, different notes or scenarios that from a Forrester report talks about where a customer choosing Microsoft 365 for the enterprise on a Surface device, it really provides not only a productive experience for their end users, but it's going to help that IT professional. And the Forrester study is saying that 171% return on investment will happen within three years when you're using this full stack together. You'll have a 14 month payback period within three years. And then as example, you'll have 10 hour per week gain in productivity out of your end users. And then this is a big one for the IT staff. It's gonna reduce application provisioning labor by over three and a half hours per device. So think about how quickly you can deploy devices. I mean, we have customers who have called us and said, we need a device on a Friday and we need to be rolling it out by the following Friday. We need to know that it's shipping. And so our distribution channel and our partners who are doing a lot of these services are just pulling off miraculous uh, you know, outcomes for our customers. They're utilizing things like autopilot so they can provision the device straight from wherever it's shipping from and get it to that end user instead of having to go to corporate to get provisioned, which causes weeks in time, right, of being able to, to get your end user productive. And that's really the end goal here. And then the security purposes, right, when we think about things like, you know, uh, traditional VPN or uh, VDI, these are all things that have been around for a while. Um, they don't get used all that heavily until just now. And anyone who's worked on VPN, I think you've experienced probably being dropped or, uh, you know, persistently having to log in again, or you switch applications and you get dropped, you move from location to location, you get dropped. With WVD and Surface, you really have a, a succinct experience. You log in once and you get to work all day. And the security behind that is really strong from an IT uh, management perspective. And it takes away a lot of those challenges. And thus, like we talked about in the Forrester outcomes, it reduces that time for management for application and, and development. Awesome. So, Andra, you know, um, a couple of things, you know, you and I have been working on, you know, with one of our partners, right, is two yes. offers. You know, one is lifecycle management and endpoint manager auto, autopilot, right? And that's, yes. that's huge. That's huge. And you're just kind of talking about that, right? You're talking about how, you know, you can you know, create all these devices. You don't have to spend those three and a half hours provisioning them. Yes. And you can use autopilot. You can use endpoint manager. And endpoint manager is different than autopilot. Endpoint manager is for all devices. That's right. is for all the Windows right, uh, devices, That's right? right. Uh, so there's that one, but then you and I, we also come together and create an offer uh, for VDI and, 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 and two with Microsoft because, it, you know, and I'll explain this just a little bit, you know, for the yes, folks that are here. We looked at this, a couple of scenarios, you know, uh, pre-pandemic, let's say you had 100,000 devices and you're doing refresh, you're doing life cycle, this is great. However, coming back from pandemic, maybe out of those 100,000 devices, only 60,000 are coming back corporate office, right? But then right. you have another 40,000, you know, like, well, wait a minute. Well, they may not do that refresh. They may not say, okay, for those 40,000, because there's an opportunity to use BYOD. So what That's we right. put together was an offer, right? Uh, and a whole framework behind this on uh, combining service with the lifecycle management, right? As well yes. as VDI, right? Putting that into it. So now you have 60,000 that are going to be refreshed corporate devices. You can use the service lineup super That's awesome. Right. But then you like those other 40,000 folks, we can do a VDI deployment. And if you get Microsoft 365, you no longer, you don't pay for that VDI instance. Right. So any of those Citrix people out there that are paying for separate licenses <laughs> on top That's of right. your M365 license, this is the perfect time to say, hey, let's look at VDI and let's look at Surface together. I think that's, that's powerful, right? It's very powerful. And I would say, Sherman, that's, uh, you know, one of the big uh, value points for me as a Microsoft partner account manager, right? Looking at 
my partners and helping them grow and figure out their new services. This is where you guys have been absolutely instrumental in supporting our partners to get to this place quicker, sooner, faster and bring value into their sales and ultimately be able to sell a customer not only the software and the device, but also the services that encompass it and make those customers' lives so much easier. Um, and additionally, keep them productive and reduce their costs. Um, you Let's go ahead and get into, oh, okay, so we have some questions here from All right. the group, uh, which is really great. Uh, one of the questions actually came from Eric Van Diver, and I remember it, yeah, I'm going to be handed the phone here just to with all the other ones. But he mentioned that he's got a daughter uh, that is in, you know, in design, right, that's coming out of college, and wants to know, um, is the Surface Studio still something that is prevalent or coming out, or are they still working on it? You know, maybe just, you know, I know that's a very singular question, but you and I were talking about no, I love it. Those. So, you know. <laughs> so I love it. You know, it's so funny because um, I would call the Surface Studio the, the hero device out there that folks just don't often think about. You go to Mac immediately when you work in that design type of world. But the Surface Studio is very powerful and it has such a wonderful setup for somebody like what your daughter's doing. Um, and it is a device that we are still invested in. We're still continuing to sell and we're still focused on, um, you know, obviously I can't share what's coming or how it's going to come or what's going to be next, but it is absolutely still a device that we have out there in the market. And we see a good amount of demand for, for a design person, just like your daughter. That's, that's fantastic. Uh, you know, my team was just telling me I get too excited sometimes. I'm moving around too much. I'm going to stop doing that, right? Uh, but I do. I, get excited about so, I know. I'm uh, trying to Another one. This. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So another question that came up, uh, I had around, you know, can you get service devices automatically deployed with BitLocker? Well, if, and I, I, I mean. It comes with it, yep. Obviously, but what, what are your, if you could just help me. Give me your yeah. thoughts on that. You absolutely can. It's a simple discussion with the partner on your needs and what you want. And these are all things that can be handled often, you know, straight before it ships to you. So absolutely, that's that's there for you. No question. Fantastic. Now, for the rest of the group here, we are putting up uh, the link inside of LinkedIn Live, you know, for you to like how to get and become a partner. We want you to go over these routes and do the best you can. We don't want you to waste time too, right? Uh, That's working right. with folks, but right? you gotta go to distribution. There's the ways of doing it and we're happy to help out. Also, we'll give some uh, information on how to get a hold of us to, to get through to a Andrew if it's really something that a big deal you're working on, you need some help with it, no problem. All right, so let's go ahead and go into uh, sales and marketing. Uh, we're sure. gonna go ahead and put that one in. <laughs> All right. All right. Thanks. You know, that's one of the things I used to always say here, you know, uh, you know, leader or dreamers, are the ones that talk about what they're going to do. And leaders are the ones that do what they talk about. Ask yourself the question, you know, are you a leader or are you a dreamer? Right. Uh, you know, I think that's, you know, we need chiefs. We have chiefs. We have Indians. But, you know, you ask yourself that question. If you're a leader, you know, to start doing something. Don't wait. Right. You know, so right. Right, getting into sales and marketing here. Um, let me ask you this, Andrew, you know, what uh, go-to-market initiatives, right, uh, are providing the biggest return on investment when it comes to the surface lineup? What do you see from your partners, from the ecosystem? What's working? Absolutely. So, you know, traditionally, I would say software, hardware, and services at our partners were sitting kind of on three different islands. They were very disparate. They were not talking to one another. They weren't fishing in each other's ponds, which seems a little bit, you know, 
obvious that that should be happening. If you're selling a big services sale, hopefully you're the one that sold the software that's being implemented or the hardware that's being implemented. But we weren't seeing that coming together until about the last, I would say, 18 months or so. We've been really pushing with our partners to help them to bring together those three worlds. And in doing so, what that does is it increases our ability um, to create programs for our partners to take advantage of with their customers. And I would say, you know, a really great one right now is our Surface Plus offering. Um, that Surface Plus offering actually rewards customers who buy Surface and have already bought in or are planning to also buy into the M365 stack. And you can see anywhere from a $20 discount in rebate form for your customer per device they buy all the way on up to $50. And so these are really great programs. Just one example of the things that we're running. We also have a really great program right now um, and it's limited, but we are trying to get the word out on our Surface Laptop Go. And we have a seed program right now for customers where we can get your customer a free device if you're reaching out to the Microsoft team. And we have an entire team of specialists. And just so folks are really aware of how Microsoft sells, you have your account team units, but you also have what we call specialty, specialty team units. And we have a modern workplace role and we have a Surface role. And there are several other roles that go along with that as well, of course, but those two roles are the ones we primarily work with. And we have a number of programs, everything from what I just mentioned with Surface Plus, the seed program that we're offering on the Laptop Go product. And then, of course, we even have, you know, uh, what we call end customer investment funds or ESIF. And those programs are available to help you with uh, mm -hmm. everything from pre-sales training all the way through to, you know, kind of more of a white glove delivery service um, or for that customer who's dipping in for the first time to do an autopilot and into an integration uh, of some sort. So all of that is available and really coming together with your Microsoft field person can help you to maximize what programs are on the list and bring that value to your customer and at the same time help you to cement your relationship with that customer as well. That's fantastic. Hey, you know, we do have another question from the audience. This is great. People are, they're interested. This is fantastic. Love um, it. So Joe asked here, he says, you know, which Surface devices are best for docking with two external monitors, keyboard mouse, other than starting over with MS docking stations, keyboards, mice, uh, are there specific third-party vendor brands that you can tell us work better or don't if a client already has them, such as Logitech, Kensington, Targets, or Dell? Joe Bruce is a great, he's asking this question. But yeah, help us. And this what, what, do what do you think? This is an amazing question, which leads me to about 50 more questions, actually, that I would want to ask. Um, so I, I may not be able to do <laughs> full service here. But what I can say is that, yes, we we have a doc too from Microsoft that works across our product, our business product line of Surface devices. Um, and so I would say you have that flexibility in all of our recent releases. So that's not a problem. Um, we do have what's called our Design for Surface Partnership. It's called DFS. Um, there are a number like Kensington, Logitech, Targus, you name it, UAG. They have a number of different, you know, everything from, you know, what you would need in a, a, a retail store for more of a POS setup to uh, what gets used, for example, in a sheriff's uh, you know, car or police department's car um, for that full setup for the console and the device snaps right into it. We even have for frontline workers and for those in healthcare already cleansed types of ruggedized cases. Um, so I would want to know a little more about his scenario so that I could recommend a bit better. But we have a number of different things that we could do there, um, depending on the scenario, the needs and, and, you know, kind of where budget lies for that customer and what they're trying to accomplish. So I would say broad answer is yes to the monitors, keyboards and mouse setup. We offer all those ancillary devices. I mean, Surface has now also, I, I must mention it. Uh, a number, a wealth of different accessories, everything from earbuds to headphones to mouse, um, you know, or mice, excuse me. And we even have a number of different, um, you know, uh, for conferencing type of capabilities, uh, accessories that you can put out there or attach to your Surface devices that really make them shine. So situationally, uh, 
come to us. I think we have a solution for you that we can bring to you either through our own type of accessories or through partnering through that design for surface uh, partnerships that we have developed. Awesome. So we have one more question that I do want to get to, and, and, and this is the surface CIE, but before I do that, funny story, uh, about two, about three years ago, I was up in, in, in Redmond, right, at the, at the mothership, and yes. I'm outside, and I bump into, randomly, the person who designed and was part of the actual power supply for surface. How and, fun. And I asked him, I said, hey, I go, do you mind if I give you some feedback? And you know, it, it's a, and he's like, "Sure, give me some feedback." And I said, "Do you wonder why the one part of the surface uh, power cord is like a Tyrannosaurus Rex arm, <laughs> and the other part is super long?" I said, "Can I tell you how annoying that is when you can't plug that sucker into somewhere where it doesn't drop off and pull off your thing off of your laptop, right?" So a year later, okay, all of a sudden, or a little bit, a year and a half later, all of a sudden, all the new surface. They no longer have the T Rex arm. I'm, I'm going to take credit for that. I'm taking it's credit. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. Long <laughs> it's longer, right? But I'm taking credit for that one. Uh, All right. We'll see that and, he, and he, I remember he, when he looked at it, he looked so so surprised and he says, Wow, you know, you're right. I'm like, you know, what's up with the one foot T Rex part that gets into the thing? Anyway, make a long story short. Let's talk about something that's really important. I'll raise my hands okay, and, and which be Which is the surface customer immersion experience. Okay, I went through five, I took all five of my folks through this. We're doing it for our partners now, right? Yes. Help me understand from your perspective why that is so important. You know, the customer immersion experience to me is one that just brings our customers such great value, but also additionally our partners. So a lot of times we get a lot of asks around, you know, how do I position surface? How do I bring it to get the life of the, you know, what you're talking about, how do we bring it to life and how do we make it real for our customer base? And one thing that we've learned at Microsoft and especially as we're onboarding so many DST managed partners or DMP partners, now we're a little over uh, 3000 at this at this point in, in time and day, we have to have scaled motions. And additionally for our selling communities, we're trying to make it easy on them, right? If you're selling somewhere upwards of 500 products, like a lot of our, our partners are, it's very tough to be an expert on everything. And so these CIEs allow a seller to bring their customer great value in a more scaled motion or in a more one-to-one -one motion with that customer to sit down and really understand the journey that customer is on, what they're trying to accomplish, what kind of things are challenging them today. And then often you're able to bring them things that they never even thought about um, you know, they, they weren't even aware existed as an example. So all of that in combination is something that we just see a tremendous amount of value these CIEs bring. I see them not only helping to train our partners and their sellers, but it's also helping to drive uh, excitement uh, for the sellers to think like, hey, I don't have to know everything when I start talking about Surface and Modern Workplace and Azure. I can bring my customer to the CIE and in the scaled form, get them very educated and hopefully bring my sale to that next step. And if it's warranted, then we sit down and we say, let's do a one-to-one -one CIE for that customer specifically and talk exactly about their needs. And I'd say, you know, just to add the one last thing, uh, that's something that I'm seeing the Cranter Group do amazing work on is helping us with those CIEs, scaling those CIEs, yeah. teaching our partners how to run their own CIEs. All of that has been amazing work that you guys have been bringing the value to for not only our, our customers, but also our partner uh, channel at large. That's great. You know, and, and what we found, we, we have a new methodology with our CIEs this year that we're now seeing that out of 12 people who show up to each CIE, we're scheduling four uh, discovery appointments from each one of us, we're using a very specific way of going about it. Um, and we really hit, I mean, heck, we've done about 300 CIEs last year. You'd think we'd get better and better at this, right? Uh, so we kind of found something using offers, using yeah. offers, very specific <laughs> offers for that. Um, we did have uh, a couple of more questions and uh, this will be pretty much, and, and the first, you know, before I say this, Andrew, thank you so much. I mean, this has really been fantastic. And, you know, we're stewards of the Microsoft brand. I want to, you know, make sure that, you know, we all know this. We, 
we love Microsoft. We, we're a big proponent. That's pretty much all we teach. That's all we learn about. That's all we all we push. So we're you know we're just ecstatic to have you on here and providing you know some of this and plus we're getting some great interaction. One of the questions, and maybe I even answer this, so I'm not going to put you on the spot. Okay, uh, was how does MS address competitor challenges? Uh, if your organization is a Dell, HPE shop, how does MS help or is transition or help convince upstream management? Well, sure. this is the first thing I would do, uh, Eric. I, I would I would go. I'd become a CIA facilitator for Surface because what that does. Uh, and as well as get your surface certification. That's what we did. We got a surface certification yes. that tells you all the lineups, right? All the different ones. And maybe attack it from the point of view of let's talk about the right device for the right worker. That's, that's what you should to kind of go into. That's the problem you're going to solve, right? You want to solve problems. You don't want to just sell SKUs. Solve problems, right. right? So you find the right person for the right device. That's how you're going to do it. Is it more expensive? Yeah, but you know something? It's cooler. It's better. And it works. And that's the right. beauty about all Microsoft products. When you buy the Microsoft product, it works with the other Microsoft products, right? We're no longer in 1996 when they didn't, <laughs> right? We're now in a good yeah. place. With that being said, I'm being told to kind of stop getting so excited because I just get excited <laughs> about this stuff. But anyways, hey, Andrea, thank you so much uh, for your time today. Let's go ahead and transition out of this. Uh, we want to say thank you so thank much to everybody. Me you know, for coming today. Uh, if you want to get a hold of Andra, uh, please uh, reach out to her via LinkedIn. This is the information for her. Uh, so go ahead and reach out to her uh, or reach back out to us. If you have a big deal that you're working on, we're happy to facilitate conversations and connections. Happy to do that. We don't sell anything to the, to the public, so we're a safe place to go to get some help. Lastly, uh, you know, please go to our YouTube channel. Uh, go ahead and subscribe there, as well as our Cranter Group Partners uh, channel that is on LinkedIn. Uh, last thing I'm going to say here is thanks again for coming today. I know we have, we're have we still working out a few issues with our distribution list. You know, that's for our team channel. <laughs> so sorry about this. Uh, we're going to start paying some people to help us figure it out. Uh, but we're trying, and we're getting better at this. And, and LinkedIn Live seems to be a really great platform to uh, really, you know, provide this this information and, and kind of monitor it. But thanks, everybody. Next week, next month, and we got a whole month. The next one, uh, we've got Allison Seltzer from the IoT uh, organization uh, business unit, right? Our business group, actually at Microsoft, and then we've got several other that are lined up. Great conversations, great yes. people. Thank you, Andra. Thank you, Andres. Really appreciate your time. We're going to go ahead and close this off and say thanks again and have a great afternoon. See you next month. Bye-bye.